the Icons of Real Estate podcast. Are you ready to learn the proven money-making secrets from top producing icon agents? Ready to skyrocket your business? This podcast is for you. Tune in every week and find out how to implement proven strategies to 10 times your business. From $3 million to $30 million in just 12 months. Brought to you by the Masters in Real Estate Marketing, Arter SEO. Welcome to the Icons of Real Estate. I'm Tim Calloway. We have a very special guest today, all the way from Bellingham, Washington, Riddick Webb. Riddick, how are you? I'm doing well, Tim. Thanks so much for having me on your podcast. Yes, of course. And thank you for being here. You know, Riddick, I, I, we, we talked a little bit before the show and I said I hadn't been there in 30 years. And, um, and then I had to be honest, I hadn't probably been to specifically Bellingham. Before we get into Bellingham and the area around and kind of the work that you do there, yeah. Let me ask you, were you like the average five-year-old tugging on your parents' pant legs saying, hey, how do I become a realtor? I can't wait. Or were, you like, <laughs> were you like the rest of no. us where, no. where we uh, at one point went, hey, what am I doing? I'm going to fall into something new. You know, I think, you know, as a kid, I wanted to be a professional soccer player. Nice. And, uh, you know, that didn't pan out. Even in college, I, uh, the thought of becoming a real estate agent didn't really cross my mind. I was actually on the track to become a, um, a counselor or a, a therapist. And then I realized pretty quickly in college after getting my a psych major and a psych minor that I just wasn't cut out for that work. And I, and I started to do some entrepreneurial jobs and the idea of being self-employed and working for myself had never crossed my mind. And I think our, you know, all through school, you're kind of pushed to go to college. And then once you go to college, you're pushed to go get a job. So entrepreneurship had never really uh, been on my radar. But once I got a taste of it, I was hooked. I mean, and, uh, and then I got my real estate license in 2010 and have never looked back since. Ah, good for you, man. That, that, that's fantastic. So did someone get you into real estate, like a friend, family member, or did you, did, I mean, yeah. was it one of yeah, those, yeah. hey, come on down for an open house and you go, hey, you know what? Yeah. So it's, it's a good story. So I, um, prior to getting into real estate, I was living with uh, three of my best friends. And one of my best friends was uh, hired by a company called Work in the Magic. And um, at that time frame, we we got heavily into internet marketing, my, my friend and I. Mm -hmm. So at the time, search engine optimization was 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 taken off, ranking in Google, getting getting these websites ranked, and then you're able to get some ads on your websites and make a little bit of money through these right. ads. So anyways, my buddy was hired by this real estate marketing company that was doing SEO for real estate agents. The owner of that company, you may have heard of him, his name's Glenn Sanford. Sure. He owns a company called EXP Realty. EXP. Sure. He Glenn approached me and said, "Hey, you should do you should do sales um, for us. Do it at this uh, real estate uh, marketing company." And so I did. And then I I only made a couple sales, but I think Glenn saw potential in me. He's like, "Hey, Brittick, why don't you get your real estate license and sell real estate?" So I uh, so I did. I got my real estate license. Um, I started at that company at EXP in 2010, but at the time I was working from home. Didn't have quite the setup for working at home. Um, and then I came to work at, uh, at Remax in November of 2010 and worked on the team for about two and a half years after that. Wow. So that's the story that's of how I actually, got into real estate. Yeah, that, I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm no blowing smoke here. That is a funny story. Obviously not funny, ha ha, yeah. but ironic. Uh, because we know Glenn very well. Actually, uh, the the owner of this company that sponsors the show is an EXP agent. Yeah. Uh, knows knows Glenn very well. Just got back from Vegas, going to Hawaii, a whole nine yards. You know how all that works. But uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's just funny, but uh, hear his name every day, probably. Oh, yeah. And I have, I have nothing but, but great things yeah. to say about EXP. When I joined, I think there were like 40 agents saying, you know, there's now 90,000. So they've, they've done very well. I've got nothing but great things to say about them. So, but yeah, that's the story of how I got involved into real yeah. estate. What a, yeah. what a comeuppance there. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. So, so we talked about kind of how you got started. 
talk about today. Are you solopreneur? Or are you on a team now? Do you have a team? How does that look? Yeah, so I have had, so I've both been on teams to start. For the first two and a half years I was at Remax, I was on uh, a team. And then uh, I had a team for a while in terms of uh, a team being myself, a full-time licensed assistant and two or three buyer's agents. And over the last four or five years, I've just transitioned to myself and a full uh, and a fully licensed assistant. So oh, nice. it's just it's just two of us. It's a it's a good setup for me. I one of the things that I learned fairly quickly was I'm not a great team leader in terms of uh, managing a bunch of other agents. I really like selling houses and working directly with clients. I'm not so much into working and, and developing agents. The, the agents that I all that I I did have on my teams, you know, they ended up you know leaving and um, they're still here at the brokerage and start their own teams. And so I was like, well, I don't know if I want to be an incubator. So yeah, so it's just myself and a, and a, and a licensed assistant. Nothing wrong with that, man. Nothing wrong. Keep it lean and mean, right? That's right. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So we talked about how you started, kind of where you're at now. Let's talk about the future a little bit. What do the next one, three, and five years look like? You know, and maybe incorporate with that. I'm really interested in hearing more about the area as well. So as you grow, you know, and you have you put your plan out in front of you. Yeah. Uh, what mm -hmm. does that look like in your area as well? I'd like to hear more about Bellingham and Washington too. So. Yeah. So I guess the two parts to that question is where yeah. do I see myself one, three, five, ten years? So we run relatively lean business, and you know we did I think twenty million in volume in twenty twenty two, which was down from where we were in twenty twenty one, which we think we did twenty seven million. So I think getting back up to that between 25 and 30 million mark is our goal for this year. I haven't set a, a five-year plan or a 10-year plan, but I do try to buy an investment property either every year or every other year. So goal for me, 10 years, is to really have the ability to have passive income to where I'm able to be more uh, exclusive with um, just working with primarily listings and buyers who I want to work with. I think uh, in terms of the area, Bellingham, Washington. So if you don't know where Bellingham, Washington is, we are in the farthest northwest corner of the United States. We're about 30 minutes from Canada here. And uh, Tim and I are talking. He's on the exact opposite side of the country down in Florida. And so um, we've got a ton of people coming our way. A lot of people from California, from Arizona, from New Mexico, places where it's getting either too hot, where water is becoming a significant issue around the country. We're getting climate refugees of people yeah. coming up here because our climate, I'm sure you heard the rumors, if you haven't been in the Northwest, we do get a good amount of rain. A little bit. A little bit. And uh, yeah, a little bit of rain. And, um, you know, it doesn't get crazy hot in the summer, minus uh, June of 2021. We, we had it, I think it got up to like 109 degrees in, uh, in June, which was, which is very abnormal, but we do. It's pretty our, toasty our, our, though, yeah. It's toasty, yeah. So our climate, I think, is driving a lot of growth. A lot of people are, are relocating to this area and it's, and it's beautiful area. It's a very lush, beautiful area. There's a ton to do outside. I'm certainly biased because I was born and raised here, nope. but it is a tremendously gorgeous area to, to live in. Yeah, it, it, it is gorgeous. And I, I, I had mentioned, uh, you know, Riddick and I had spoken before the program and I, I haven't been in that area. I'm one of the few people that would say I have been to that area, uh, but in the last, it's been over 30 years, you know, and yeah. it is, uh, you know, at least where I was, I, I, I have to admit, and I told you this, I haven't been to Bellingham, but I've been to the Orca Islands, you know, I've been through uh, Friday Harbor and all that. I have to admit, you know, me living in West Palm Beach, which populace wise and, 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 and even like media wise, you know, most people know the idea of the high rises and the beachfront and so on and so forth. We see it everywhere. But I really think until you experience going to a place uh like the 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 northwest side of bellingham where you're you're at and really experiencing that and i'll tell you what's interesting is when i pulled your website up before we 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 began our program 
and I, you know, I saw all the videos of the bikers through the mountains and things like that. And the kids, mm -hmm. you know, jump. I had forgotten just how lush and beautiful the water was, the waterfronts there. Uh, very beautiful. And I'm, I'm really just backing up what you said. Uh, really amazing and, and kind of hard for this. It's like the first time I saw the Grand Canyon, right? You yeah. Know, you're just like your mind tries to absorb it and goes, wow, that's some beautiful, you know, uh, escape. There. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So, you know, we talked about now what the, what the next, you know, one, three and your, your personal investment side of it, you do run lean and mean, any plans to grow the team at all? I mean, I know you said, you know, you're not, you're not really one to be the leader. You know, when you look at, I'll go ahead and say it, Riddick, you know, you mm -hmm. look at exit strategies for yourself um, yeah. out, out of the industry, take away the part of you having your own investments to fulfill your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But, you know, do you, do you have any plans on, hey, I can sell my end of the business one day? You ever look at doing anything like that? You know, it's a good question, Tim. And I've been asked that, you know, before. I would say that, no, I, I don't have a solid, solidified exit strategy in terms of the ability to package my business and all my systems and everything and, and sell it to somebody else. I mean, I've, I've seen it done with yeah. some agents and teams that they've done a, a decent job with that. I'm not set up in that way to plan my bit. I mean, I'm 38. So I, so to me, exit strategy is still, ah, I, so still I, I still love what I do. Right. Yeah. I still really enjoy this and I'm going to do it as long as I possibly can. Yeah. Cause this is, this is fun for me. For sure. And so um, my exit strategy, I really do think will be, you know, acquiring enough investment rentals so that they're able to make more money than I'm able to selling houses. You should be able to walk away. Yeah, yeah. Be able to mic drop. Be nice. mic, drop the mic at some point. Just right. walk into the, the sunset mic. and say, "Ah, adios." Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so let me ask you this: In my opinion, as I as I listen to what you're telling me, you seem very very calm, serene guy, um, and I and I think. <laughs> I will attest to that area, you know, bringing that forth too. I mean, it's, it's a very calming yeah. area to me. Um, sure. So let me ask you this. I think you have like a utopian situation there. Not everybody's life is, is totally utopian, but if there mm -hmm. was anything, any one problem that I could solve for you at all, you know, and I just had a magic wand, you know, Harry Potter gave me his magic wand and you and I sat down uh, what, what would that be? What are it on a day-to-day -day basis or challenges? Everybody has challenges, right? In our industry, everybody has challenges. Uh, a lot of people say, hey, Tim, if mm -hmm. I had more time, it'd be great. What are some of your challenges or your main challenge you'd like to see? Uh, oh, that's a good question. Uh, uh, what are the main challenges? Uh, besides office fires. Yeah. <laughs> Tim and I were talking beforehand and we had, a, we had an office fire. I think if I could utilize my time in the most effective way you know if i'm able to eliminate the things that either don't bring me joy right and or don't make money you know i don't have facebook on my phone right and the reason i don't have facebook on my phone is because i'll be uh, you know, at home scrolling on it, like arguing with sure. people about stuff that doesn't, that doesn't mean anything at all. You're and so, uh, yeah, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I can certainly um, get addicted to that form of technology where I'm scrolling. And so I'm aware of that. So where I think, you know, eliminating some of those distractions right. is a challenge of mine. You know, I'll scroll and do the doom scrolling on the news. Right. And a, a lot of these things are completely out of my control. And so I think that for me, that's a challenge is getting distracted by things that don't matter. Another thing I think is like, I could certainly be more present. I could be more present with my family. I could be more present in my work. I think a lot of us real estate agents are constantly clawing at the future trying to get the next deal in the pipeline that get the next thing and really not enjoying the process. So I think really dropping back and enjoying the moment, being present with what is being more surrendering to all the ups and downs in our business. I mean, we can have deals fall apart. We can have commissions fall apart. We can have deals come together and it right. can be easy to get attached to outcomes. So right. really dropping back, I think is, is a, it, I'm working on it and I've gotten much better at it, but 
detaching myself from the outcomes and really focusing on the process and being present. 